Pleasure to have you with us. Uh, just give us a feeling, your first finals win. Well, what, what's radiating through you right now? Uh, it just feels good to get back in the in the win column. Um, obviously, you know, we took two, two early on in the series. Um, and that, it felt like the longest couple of days of our lives. You know, we didn't lose two in a row the whole playoff run. And unfortunately, like I said, we lost two. But, you know, we're back. Um, we feel good. Um, and we're ready for game four. Obviously, we're going to watch the film, make some adjustments, and, you know, we'll give it, all, give it our all. Defense, rebounding, points off turnovers, all that stuff coming back. How critical was it? How much of that were you guys discussing over the last couple of days? That's all it was. You know, rebounding was a big part of our, our focus. Um, you know, we know how big they are, how talented they are inside. And, you know, it's, it's going to take a, a full 48 minutes of, of, of our basketball on our terms. And, you know, that's really what it was tonight. You know, I felt like we had the lead for, the, for most of the game. But, you know, they're going to make some adjustments and be ready for game four. I know you're out there busy uh, trying to help this team win a game, but on occasion, were you able to enjoy Jimmy Butler being Mr. Buckets and then some? Oh, yeah, I was enjoying every second of it. <laughs> just seeing him do him. You know, I, I, work, I work out with him a lot. So, you know, just seeing, seeing all that time pay off is, is just amazing. Uh, we know how hard he works. And for him to do what he did, you know, the world, was world, the world seeing what Jimmy Butler was capable of tonight. Before we let you go, you're not going to be able to see it, but we're going to share with uh, Heat Nation at home. You getting a critical drive to the rim late and then giving us a face that only can be made in Wisconsin, buddy. You brought that, you brought that <laughs> yeah. face, that snarl right there. There's almost a little Elvis Presley in that snarl. What's going on there, baby? <laughs> I don't know. Just, just in the heat of the moment. <laughs> I understand. I know Big Blue Nation loves it. I know Heat Nation loves it. Partner, I know it's just <laughs> one win. But will you enjoy it for me, please? Uh, a little bit, but we need to get back to work. We got to get back to work. I we, know got, the deal. we got three more to get. I know the deal. Yes, sir. I know you know that. how it just is. Try. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you very much for stopping by. First of all, do something that all of us need to do. Figure out a different way, a unique way to describe the impact of Jimmy Butler. It's impossible, man. <laughs> that guy, man, it's, it's, he's unbelievable. He's the CEO of Big Face Coffee for a reason. <laughs> uh, it is amazing to watch his impact. How about your own getting more of an opportunity? Not the way anybody wants it, obviously, with Bam going down, but your thoughts and, and the way that you've tried to impact these last couple games. Yeah, I mean, obviously, Bam is so huge for us. It's been huge for us all year. Uh, you never want to see that. Um, but, you know, if someone can't go, you know, we got to fill in and, and pick up for them. And I think we did that as a collaborative group effort tonight. Kelly, what was the key to creating a, a defense, a defensive disposition, as Coach likes to say, uh, to at least tap the brakes on two of the game's best players? Yeah, I mean, just, you know, we got we to gotta help each other, you know, trust each other, um, be there for each other. You know, they're, they're a great team. Obviously, they're here for a reason. Uh, they're going to make plays, and you can't get down, can't get discouraged. You just got to keep, you know, keep working, keep working our system, and Coach put in a great game plan, and, and we executed. Kelly, we appreciate it, but we thank you for your time. Congratulations on this victory. Appreciate you, Jax. Take care, buddy. Do you want to just talk about Jimmy Butler for a second? <laughs> I mean, he controlled the game. He controlled the whole offensive tone of the game. He, um, whenever we felt like he was slipping a little bit, he, he was able to control the game on that end of the court for us. And um, but it was huge tonight. We we, we rolled him out. We rolled him out. He, he led the entire game, and uh, we was just on his back. He's making plays for himself, making plays for others, and um, he got us to win tonight. And you guys, it was kind of not really a secret that you were going to do a lot of. You know, he was going to have the ball in his hands a lot like he did last game. But I don't know, was there a, uh, a moment where, or could you tell coming in that it was going to be, you know, this kind of night? You know, he obviously had the 40 points against Milwaukee, but is there like a, a certain Jimmy locked in uh, vibe you get from him? Uh, he was no different than the other, uh, previous games. Um, we just had a good game plan with, it, with him on the offensive end and making, letting him make plays, like I said, for himself and for others. And we just tried to put it, Coach Spoke did a great job of just. Uh, having some sets for us to, to, to get some looks, and um, he was able to capitalize from there. He was able to control the game from there. So um, it was just a good game plan on our end, and we tried to execute it the best as possible to just get us a win.
All right, next up, we have Nick Friedel with ESPN. Go ahead, Nick. Jay, you've obviously been around Jimmy a long time. Have you ever seen him be able to dominate like he did tonight and, and carry you guys the way he did down the stretch? Uh, I mean, he's always been that type of guy that you can depend on, man. <laughs> well, whatever, whatever you need, not only is just scoring, though, he's able to get a big rebound. He's able to get the big, <laughs> the big foul, uh, the big charge. In college, he was, he was that guy. He was that guy who just, whatever you need him to do, he will come through. And uh, tonight, um, it's no different. Obviously, I've been around him. I've seen him do stuff like this, but he's always been that type of player. Just whatever you need him to do, whether he gets that big steal to, to steal the game, he's able to do it. And um, he's capable of doing that. So I'm not surprised at all. All right, next up we have Manny with The Athletic. Go ahead, Manny. Hey, Jay. Um, obviously, Jimmy had a huge game, but I wanted to talk to you about what you guys did with Anthony Davis because he had really been hurting you guys in this series. Uh, and to get him into foul trouble early and just a defensive job that you guys did against him. I mean, well, we just try to just set a tone and just be physical with him. Uh, obviously, um, his, uh, his rebounding and stuff came within our zone, with our zone defense. So we try to just man up as much as possible this game and, and, and get a body on him because sometimes in the zone, he's able to just roam free. And then when the shot goes up, he's, he's so big and tall and athletic, he's able to just um, wedge, wedge, wedge a smaller guy in and get a rebound. So tonight, I feel like our man-to-man -man defense is able to Sustain him a little bit, hold him, hold him, hold him, hold him to um, what we wanted to on the boards, and from there he's a hell of an offensive player. So everybody, all five guys on the court at tennis was up, obviously, uh, for his sets and for his looks. So um, we, just it. we just executed the game plan tonight. What's it like having the game of your life when your team absolutely needs you to have the game of your life in that situation? Well, we won. I could care less about you know a triple double. Um, we play this game to win. I mean, I'm glad my teammates got a lot of trust and faith in me to go out there and uh, hoop like that. But like I always say, if you guarantee me a win, I could care less. Jeff, second row. Jimmy, second uh, game in a row. You played 45 minutes. You went to the free throw line double digit times. You got beat up a little bit. Can you describe a little bit about what your off-season training regimen might be to put you in position at this point of the season to do that? Um, my trainer, James Scott, does a great job of making sure that I'm strong enough to play through contact and, um, just be conditioned. That's what we do here in the heat. Um, we pride ourselves on that and I, I love it. I love the work and I, I tell coach all the time, I'm ready for this. Like the biggest stage, whatever you ask me to do, I can do it. Next question is from Naveen Ganglani from the Philippines. Hey, Jimmy, congrats on the win. There was some back and forth there with LeBron. He said sometime in the first quarter that you guys were in trouble and you ended up saying the same thing later on in the fourth quarter. How's that competitive nature between you and LeBron been like in this final? Um, I mean, it's competition at its finest. Um, I think LeBron has got the best of me way too many times. Um, I respect the guy for it, um, but this is a different time now, a different group of guys that I have around me, and um, we're here to win. We're here to compete, but we're not going to lay down. We're going to fight back in this thing, and he went up 2-2. Next question, Vincent Goodwill. Jimmy, you knew coming into the, to tonight you were going to carry the offensive load and defend LeBron for the entire night. Do you find pockets within the game to have to choose to be assertive, not necessarily to save your body, but to conserve your energy so you have something left in the last four or five minutes? Nope. You got to empty the tank on every possession, especially playing against a um, great team like the Lakers. But uh, we got a good team, you know. Like I always say, I got the easy job. These guys create so much space for me. I get to shoot it whenever I'm open. I pass it whenever I'm not. Um, I really do have the easy job, but none of us, none of us are ever going to leave anything in the tank. We're going to lay it all out there on the floor. Rachel, here in the front. Jimmy Tyler, Hero is the youngest player to ever start in an NBA Finals game. How did you see him from game two to game three learn and improve and come out the way he did tonight? Um, I saw him just hoop, which is what I tell him every single chance I get. This isn't a big stage for him. This is just basketball. Do what you've been doing all year long, and we're going to live with it. We ride with you, um, we're supporting you, and we're constantly giving you confidence. There's no shot 
that you've never seen that you don't like, and we love you for that. So you take those because that's what's going to help us win games, compete, guard, and um, being the youngest to, to play or start. It's another day for him. It is. Damn. Jimmy, you kind of <clears throat> gave a shrug to Tim about your performance. You, you did the same in the Eastern Conference Finals. Um, what is it about you where you just don't care? And it seems like you almost would prefer if it was Tyler's night or if it was Kelly's night or, or whoever else is scoring 40 in a win. Everybody remembers winning. That's it. I don't care how many points you score. I care if you, you win a loss. Um, and for us, we're all about winning. We are. I say it all the time about meaning. Um, the guys that we have, the group that Coach Pat and Coach Bo put together, it's always to win, nothing else. So I hope the next game I score zero and y'all talk all y'all want to talk, and we win, so I come up here and say the same thing. Next question, Anthony Chang. Hey, Jimmy, I, I know this win is, is bigger than Goran and Bam, but how much does it mean to you to kind of obviously get this win for them and even buy more time for them for a possible return? means a lot. Uh, I go out there and I, I go to war for those guys. Because um, whenever they're out there, they're going to war with and for me. Whatever they ask me to do, I want to do it to the best of my ability. Obviously, they asked me to go out there and win like they did the previous two games. And I couldn't hold them my end of the bargain. Um, glad I did that. We did that, I should say. And um, give them an extra couple of days and get those guys back. <laughs> Malika. Jimmy, first, I just wanted to clarify. It looked like you said you're in trouble. Is that what you said? That is what I said. Okay. And then secondly, you said last game or after last game, you guys would have to play damn near perfect in order to beat these guys. Where, where does this fall in terms of playing close to damn near perfect? First of all, we're not going to act like I'm just out there talking trash because I'm not. Brian said it to me at the end of the first. That's what happened. I just said it to him in the fourth quarter. And um, talking about playing damn near perfect, uh, we did a good job of that tonight. We rebounded the basketball, which is what we always talked about. We got back. Um, but I think guys are starting to realize how much we belong on this stage and that we are in the finals for a reason. And to tell you the truth, I think um, when we get these other two guys back, they're going to make everybody's job, including mine, a lot easier. So I'm excited, um, but we still got to play better moving forward. Gary in the center. Jimmy, in the fourth quarter, and obviously throughout the game, you just went to the moves that you usually go to. How, how fun is it to challenge guys to stop you when they know what you're going to do, you know what you're going to do, but you can still do it? Um, the offensive player is always at the advantage. Um, as long as you can get to your spot, you do what you really want to do. Um, but like I always say, like, my teammates do that for me. You can't leave those guys because if you do, I'm passing it to them. Half the time, it's a bad pass and be at their feet, but um, they always find a way to make the shot. I have so much confidence in this group of guys, as do Coach Bo. Um, it's, it's so fun to play with you guys. even better to win with them. Next question is Manny Navarro. Hey, Jimmy, uh, at the end of the game, you know, uh, Tyler hit a shot there, and he kind of had this scowl on his face. Just to see him kind of end the game on that note, exuding that confidence and being kind of fired up. I don't know if you saw exactly the face he made, but I know it's going to be on replays everywhere. I just, saw him. Uh, it the thing with his lip. I saw that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just uh, your thoughts on that and, and, and to see him kind of finish the game strong. I know it was, it was kind of a rough shooting day for him early. Uh, Tyler's always going to be Tyler. Um, <laughs> and I think we all love him for that. But like I tell T all the time, he's, he's my third favorite hero. His little brother, Miles, is definitely my favorite. So... You know, I'll talk more to Miles tomorrow than I will to Tyler because I think he is the reason that Tyler plays like that. He understands that he looks up to Tyler, and so Tyler goes out there and, and plays with so much confidence because he knows that his little brother's a watch. Sam in the middle. Jamie, I, I know you, uh, you clarified the Braun interaction, but I'm wondering, like, the meaning of that statement, they're in trouble for all of you guys. Is this the kind of game that leaves you feeling that way? And, and in terms of your own belief, you know, is that huge? And also, as a quick follow-up, did you notice in the last second, Ron ended up and made a few subs and he was in the back before everything wrapped up? Did that get your attention at all? And, and does it mean anything? No, it means nothing. Um, I, we stay focused on ourselves. 
that's how we got here. Um, but we're just settling down. I think it's a, it's a lot of bright lights. It's a big stage for almost everybody except for Coach Bo, um, Dre, OG. And nobody been here before. But we're coming to realize that we belong here. We're a really good team, and we can win, as we've shown tonight, if we play basketball the right way, if we do what we say we're going to do. Um, so everybody's just becoming more and more comfortable as the days go by. Next question is David Aldridge. Jimmy, uh, AD and Bron, first two games really kind of sliced you guys up with their interior passing. What did, what did you do to take that away as a team tonight? We put bodies on bodies. Um, we played a lot more man, which um, I think we all agreed was a, a good call on coach's part. He's great at adjusting. And um, we rebounded the basketball. We made a lot of things difficult for him. Uh, all hands on deck, getting into the paint. And um, I think it's going to be even better whenever we get Bam back. Next question, Mark Schwartz, ESPN. Jimmy Duncan said uh, just a few minutes ago that you kind of live for those moments when everybody jumps off the bandwagon. It seems like people have jumped pretty far off the Miami bandwagon when you guys fell down 2-0, and you were nine-point underdogs in this game tonight. How does that fuel a competitor like you to put together a game like you did in, on, on this stage? It doesn't. Um, I don't care. We don't. We really don't care. Um, we can care less if you pick us to win. Obviously, y'all picking us to lose. We're just going to go out there and compete, do what we know that we're capable of. But I will say Duncan needs to shoot the ball a lot more. Um, he needs to, to hunt shots because um, he's going to be a reason that we win one of these games. He's going to hit six, seven threes. And um, I'm going to jump up and down. I'm going to give him a big hug, maybe a slight kiss on the back of his head because um, I know how important that, that guy is to our team. Next question, Nick Friedel. Come on, Nick. Go ahead, Nick. <laughs> next question. Next, next question is Brady Troop from Heat TV. Jimmy, you after falling in game one and two, how were you guys able to still maintain that confidence in your play and just who you guys are as a unit? We're always confident. We know that we can win any game. We rebound. Um, if we don't turn the ball over, if we get back, things like that. Uh, but we got a group that, like, we're, I don't like the word underdog, so nobody's picking us. There you go. Nobody's picking us, and we, we really don't care. We're just going to go out there and compete. That's what we've been doing all year long, all playoffs, um, the time that we've been here. Uh, stay confident because we know we're a good team. How else do you say it other than, you know, Jimmy F. and Butler? Um, but this is what he wanted. Uh, this is what we wanted. Um, it, it's really hard to... Um, analyze or describe Jimmy uh, until you actually feel him between the four lines. He is a, a supreme elite competitor um, and we needed it. Uh, you know, obviously this was a, this was a, a very desperate, urgent game and, and he was doing it on both ends of the court. Um, just put his imprint uh, at every important part of the game. And, uh, you know, he's in the top percentile of this entire association in terms of conditioning. Um, and you saw uh, he just got stronger as the game uh, went on. Um, but in, in terms of, you know, you saying a, a Marquette guy, you know, Dwayne swore to us. He looked us, Pat and I, dead in the eye and said, this is, uh, this is your guy. This is, this is the next guy. Um, but it's, it's, it's also just, you know, one. And so we're, we also have perspectives that uh, we're not going to get carried away with this. And to follow up, Eric, what was, I mean, Double-digit leads mean nothing in a three-point era now, obviously, but yeah. you guys had let a couple slip away, and then Rondo's way up, I think, early in, early in the fourth, put you guys down two. At that point, were you worried about how much you would have had left? You are playing shorthanded and all that. Were you worried at that no, point? No, no, our guys are in great condition. It's more about conquering those moments of truth during the game, and this is where this opponent is probably, not probably, they are better than anybody in the league at that. You have uh, LeBron and Rondo, uh, controlling and orchestrating, you know, the important parts of the game. Uh, and, and we were losing those battles, you know, big in, in the first two games. 
Um, so you're not expecting it to be easy, like a 10, 12 point lead, you know, that, that's going to go like that. Uh, but you have to be able to respond to it and do it appropriately. You have to do it with intensity, but you, you have to do it with a mind, you know, to, to get what we're trying to do. It can't just be running around, you know, as hard as you can. You have to have a, a real thought uh, behind it and a discipline and a poise. Um, and we showed, showed that better tonight, um, obviously, than the first two games. Dan, here in the front. Spo, um, the Lakers turn it over, I think, like 10 times in the first quarter or something like that, and, and you guys only lead by three. Um, at that moment, did you feel like there was an opportunity there that, that we didn't take full advantage of? And, and then I guess secondly, um, Jimmy's just physical toughness, the, the fouls he took late. Yeah. It's, um, he was stealing minutes on the ground <laughs> trying to. Yeah, you know. Uh, nah, he wasn't. He, he got hit uh, down there, but he knows how to do that. Um, you know, to answer your first question, no. Like, you're not expecting it to be easy. So you, you have to do whatever is necessary. It's a 48-minute game for a reason. Uh, you have to be able to compete at a high level, uh, and there's going to be a lot of ups and downs uh, during the course of it. I, I liked it, and I wanted. I was really wanted to see how we were going to respond. Uh, we, we've been in those moments in game games one and two, they were too fleeting, and we didn't respond to that well enough. This is uh, elite competition both ways, um, and we responded to it uh, better tonight. Um, and then in terms of the physicality, you know, this is what Jimmy, why he prepares the way he does that is so uncommon uh, year-round um, is to be able to, to take on that physicality to make those plays uh, to be able to draw fouls and, and take contact and and uh, and get up and, and be able to make those those free throws. Um, I mean, he just was, you know, it's so settling when you have that type of guy in a in a really competitive game like this. Uh, it allows your other guys and we're playing young guys. They can just be who they are. They don't have to worry about too much pressure or context. Um, they can just be who they are when you have. Um, somebody like that that takes on all the pressure for them. Next question is from Naveen Ganglani from the Philippines. Hey, Mabuhai. Hey, Coach Mabuhai. Coach, you, you had a lot of players you coach over the years who are great. You know, LeBron used to be in the heat, Wade, Shaq, um, Zoe also. Just in terms of what Jimmy did today, guarding LeBron on one end and taking over the offense on the other end, where would you rank this in terms of some of the best individual performances you've seen throughout your coaching career? Well, first, Mabuhai, Salamipo, um, and then secondly, out of all due respect, I'm not going to rank it. it um, it's, it's one win. Um, Jimmy understands this. Uh, it, it, it's going to take whatever is necessary, everything over the top and beyond. Um, this is not about comparing uh, to anybody else uh, in the history, and that's out of all due respect. It's about what we're trying to get accomplished in this locker room. Uh, we have a very committed group uh, to this. We have incredible respect for this opponent. Uh, we have to figure this out. Um, and if we're not on top of our game, uh, you know, we saw what it can look like, <laughs> you know, and in the previous two games. Um, but this is why we, we uh, pursued Jimmy, you know, so aggressively. Uh, just, we just felt uh, all across the board there was an alignment um, that we're sharing the same competitive values for right or wrong, and we don't, it doesn't matter what everybody else thinks. It's, we're aligned on that, uh, and you're able to build a, a culture from that and, and develop a team around uh, him.